But I learned so much from that food exper experiment. I learned that consistency and showing up every day plays a major role in making something happen. And that done is better than perfect. Done, getting something done and putting it out there is better than making something perfect and hoping that it will work. So by the end of this, um, I guess my work started circulating around. And the fun bit about putting yourself out there on the internet is you don't know who, who looks at your work. And one day I had an interesting email come in. And the email came in like this. Hi, our boss really likes your work. Do you want to create a piece for his birthday? I, I was really busy with a lot of projects. I kind of ignored it. A week later, he came in again and said, Hi, by the way, my boss is Jackie Chan. Would you like to create a piece for him? And I was like, oh, wait, 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 wait hold on. <laughs> hold on a second. So I responded to it. And I met up with Jackie Chan in Shanghai. It was a, I, was, I was totally starstruck. wasn't sure what to say. We sat down and brainstormed an idea for his portrait. And I remember that day, it was me and my assistant, Aggie, meeting him. We went back to the hotel. We met him in Beijing, went back to the hotel. I looked at Aggie and I was like, what am I going to do? I am freaking out. I cannot do this, right? I don't know how I landed here with just a couple of videos and I'm making a piece for him. And he wants to share it in his concert, birthday concert and online. And he's going to be in the video. What if this doesn't work? This will be the end. I totally had a big freak out session. But after I calmed down a bit and we talked about this, we realized that in a lot of the projects that I took up in a lot of commercial projects, even architecture projects, I learned that if you really want something, say yes to it and then figure out how to work on it because it's actually not that difficult to accomplish things with enough grit, keyword from just now, perseverance, common sense, and if you know how to be resourceful. So we sat down, calculated the amount of chopsticks we needed. We needed 64,000 chopsticks in two weeks. Um, and with 10 chopsticks bundled up like that, it would take five minutes. So you can do the maths quickly. That would take a long, long time. So I told Aggie, what should I do? And she said, okay, let's be resourceful. We thought about a plan. We went to the south of China, went to the place where they had, where they produced, they had bamboo forests, went to factories, got these, got these, um, got these chopsticks. Next slide. So this is me going from, from, from factory to factory, getting chopsticks. And then I asked Aggie, how about laborers? How about workers? What are we going to do? That we can't do it with just two people. And she told me, actually, um, in the village that where my mom is at, um, the women, after they send their kids off to school at 8 o'clock, they have a free sort of period from 8 to 2. Maybe we can get them along. So that was what happened. Next slide. So we rounded up the crew, all these ladies, and I said, okay, guys, uh, we're going to create a portrait for Jackie Chan. I paid them, of course. This is what you do. Just bundle it up like this. So all of them followed suit. So by the end of it, I couldn't believe it. It took 10 days to work on this from 8 a.m. up to 6, 7, 8 p.m., 10 hours a day, 12 hours a day. And by the end of it, we had everything. And let me show you the video. I won! Oh. Why are you so good? Very good because I've played with 64,000 chopsticks this month. In a month? In one month. Master. Thank you. I use my hand. <laughs> Thank you.
and that's my very bad kung fu move. So, <laughs> so that's my, my piece for Jackie Chan. Um, and to wrap up this whole session, I thought I'd show you one last piece that is very dear to me. It's my latest big project that I did for Malaysia. Um, I was invited to the World Economic Forum to present a piece that reflected the Malaysian culture. And I thought, okay, maybe not, not the typical Bunga Raya or the landmarks and all that. I really wanted something that reminded me of home. And I was, I think I was, I was in Melbourne at this time and I really wanted a glass of Teh Tarik. Really, really wanted it. So I thought, why not? Maybe I can make a, a portrait of a Teh Tarik man out of, I don't know how I got into this idea, out of tea bags. So I collected 20,000 tea bags and this is the piece. <laughs> something else with tea. a piece. Thank you very, very much. So to wrap up all this, I needed to tell you about what really motivates me and what makes this whole journey so rewarding. You know what really motivates me? It's when I see sparkly eyes in the audience. And today I see a lot of sparkly eyes looking back at me. <laughs> I see a lot of sparkly eyes looking back at me and that shows me that all of you have this sense of wonder and beauty and possibility that only you can give to this world in your own unique ways. So before I end this, I thought I'd share with you a little bit of a secret when it comes to making art and when it comes to creativity. So hear me out. 99% of the time, the hardest part about creativity or art is not in coming up with an original idea. Let me say that again, 99% of the time, the hardest part about art is not coming up with an original idea. The hardest part is to make something happen despite your fears and doubts. And I hope that throughout this journey just now, you heard, you heard the term of fear and doubt and fear and doubt a lot in me, even though I had created this body of work. So maybe the secret to creativity is to welcome that fear and instead of running away from it, welcome it and just do it anyway. So go out there and make something happen today. Thank you. <laughs>